And here we are, we're back. That was quick. Woohoo! Woo Hopefully we didn't lose too many people. <laughs> so I've, um, I've literally just started. We were, we were at, um, I don't know, 50, 52 million or something when, uh, when we ended the last segment. And I've literally just taken it off pause so you can enjoy the, uh, the trains running around. And I've done a bit more decorating so that you can kind of get a, a bit of a better impression of what it looks like when you uh, when you decorate up a section. And I've just uh, done did, just done Did you this do that here. all while paused? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll just give you I'll just give you a target to shoot for. Uh company score 15. Oh, you have cracked on. That see that'll be the oh. airplanes. That'll be the airplanes. Interestingly though, uh my company value is lower now than it was when I was at a uh, score of 12. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's not, that's that's not the, the big factor in your company score. If, yeah, in I fact, think if, I go into, if I go into my company score, yeah. um, I probably haven't got any of the bonuses yet. Oh, I've got, I've got one, so you get, you get six, I've got six points for my company value, right? You get points for your company value. But yeah. then you get a whole bunch of other points for, um, like having a, a fast vehicle, uh, how many boats have you got? How many planes have you got? That's why you'll have jumped up because you've got planes. Got it, right, yes, that um, makes sense. Uh, how many trains you've got, how many trucks you've got. Like you get certain amount of points for having like 100 uh, road vehicles or 100 trains or... And then it will be track distance covered and the number of towns connected and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's all, there's all kinds of things that feed into the company score. Is that listed somewhere? Um, if you mouse over the company score, it gives oh, you a tool tip with it all broken down. <laughs> okay, so I've got six points from value, one point for having more than five aircraft, two for a max, oh, two points for maximum vehicle age. I think I've got one that's like 200. <laughs> yeah. it's uh, always a good three one for a fast vehicle, one for a very long, one for rail network tunnels, and one for having transported 100,000 units of cargo. Right, I'm going to I'm gonna have a little ride on this train past my farmland. And um, and see if it looks like anything like pretty. So um, so let's, let's let's see. I want to be running on normal speed. So we're going to have a, a a little bit of a trot through the trees to start off with. And then when we come through these trees, we should break into on the right hand side some. Fairly nice farmland, and there you go. How's that for a, a nice looking vista? Very nice. It's very nice to have some cultivated land. Yeah, I think uh, I think what we want to do is we want to start uh, kind of just muttering generally about an agricultural machinery mod. I, I mean. Wait till the modders get hold of this. Oh, I know, because, they're nuts. Because what we want are, you know, like the stuff that I want to be adding to this. I mean, obviously, I would love to have some tractors running around. But yep. um, but I'm going to settle for being able to put in not just corn fields and wheat fields. I want to put in uh, animal fields. You know, I want right. fields of sheep and cows and whatever. I want to be riding on my trains and going, oh, look, there's a field full of sheep and stuff like that. And I want uh, I want all the buildings, yes. you know. I want great silos big grain and silos. And, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because that's what that's what adds interest to the rides. Because if you just literally throw down tracks, then riding the trains isn't necessarily all that interesting. I mean, it can be when you've got terrain like you've got. I mean, all those bluffs and mesas and whatever are beautiful to look at very yeah. epic but when you're on kind of the flat of the terrain or, or like on a temperate map you need that little bit more interest i mean i've got well, the beautiful the thing, beaches and stuff to look at what you could quite easily do in the in the editor is is start out at one end of the map with you know deserts and mesas and all that kind of business but then gradually smooth it out uh to become a more temperate landscape heading down towards the beach oh you absolutely could you absolutely could uh so you then you could have the best of both worlds you know i was i was thinking a bit earlier i can't need snow i can't wait to revisit my um 
Boswash Corridor. Yes. Uh, plan. Because I did a I did a series a while ago, um, trying to recreate trying to recreate the um, the Boston Washington Corridor. So from didn't you from... crack a hundred episodes on that one? You no, 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 no. It all fell apart after about like I think like fifteen episodes or something. Oh, okay. Now the EPEC, the EPEC, we got up to like ninety-five episodes, and right. ninety-seven episodes or something. Um, uh, I did, did all mine until the mods wiped me out. So, so yeah. So there you go, right. guys. So this is this is the kind of thing you can do with a if you spend just a. This this took me about twenty minutes. I mean, I did kind of rush it. It's not it, it's not particularly even. Uh, I didn't take a lot of care when I was doing the edging and stuff. But um, but yeah, like twenty minutes. You can knock in a, a nice piece of terrain. Imagine if, imagine if this extended out throughout this whole valley. That would look gorgeous. Right, I'm going to scoot. All right, have a good. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be back around the usual sort of time. Um, so, so what are we doing? We're just going to carry on. Why not? Uh, it suits me, sir. Well, I'll tell you what. I, how about you, sir. you? How about you knock on until let's say half nine? And then I'll pick up and do an hour and a half after that. Um, no, no, you know then, what? No, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do now till like just after nine. Okay. Um, oh, then you jump on because time. I tell you what, I might, I might do another segment after that because the poor, excellent, the poor, yep. the poor uh, colonial cousins, you know, are only just, are only just starting to wake up. I mean, <laughs> um, like. 7 p.m. their time, when they're all they've got home from work and they've sat down and they've they've had the they've had the tea, and it's uh, and, and that's it's east coast. midnight for us, right? And that's east, yeah, exactly. So the poor poor west coast has got no chance. So I well uh, maybe maybe I'll do another section. We'll see. We'll see how okay. it goes. We'll see how it all goes. All right. Well, happy hunting, and I'll talk to you in a bit. Thank you very much, Squire. Bye. Bye. Alrighty. So I am Skystorm, and I'm back with uh, with my wonderful assistant, Picture Perfect. Hey there, Picture. Hey, I'm doing good, thank you. Good, 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 good. Um, you haven't had much to do, have you? Um, no. <laughs> it's very quiet in the comments. A little bit, yeah. Guys, we we need more questions in the comments to give Picture something to do. She's feeling neglected. Come on, <laughs> look after her for heaven's sake. Alrighty. So what are we going to do in um, in this segment? I, I don't know. I don't know. I was going to do, potentially, um, a horrendously complex uh, cargo network, which was going to be a push to do in a couple of hours. But if I'm going to do another section afterwards, it's possible. Um, I, like, what are you... Guys, come on, chip in. What do you want to see? What is it that... You know, you're sitting there looking at the game and going, "Oh, you know what I'd really like to see is this," because um, I'm here to I'm here to demonstrate the game. That's what the, that's what they've got me in for. So, tell tell us what you'd like to see, and uh, and I will do my best to demonstrate it. In the meantime, I suppose I could extend. It. I tell you what, while you, while I'm waiting for you guys to. Uh, to do a bit of that, um, I could always extend out a little bit uh, on my passenger line. Which way do I want to go? Oh, that's right. Because I, I was, I was thinking of doing that ridiculous, um, ridiculous spiral. Well, that could be kind of fun. From from Allentown to Indianapolis, <laughs> that could definitely <laughs> be fun. But you know what? Let's let's bang in. Let's extend the main line. Let's bang in a couple of um, a couple of stations. Let's do let's add Vallejo and uh, and Dallas and uh, maybe Salt Lake City. I don't know. We'll see. Let's have, let's let's have a look. Okay. Let me pause the game while I'm uh, messing around with these stations. So let's, uh, let's take that out. We'll extend this road. I should probably have done this. Before I took that other road out. Oh, no, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Let's throw that in like that. We want a train station, buildings. We want passenger through station. Uh, I should put my 
bus station in first. Now you don't have to, I could put my bus station opposite. It's just, I think it's just a kind of a nice way to do it. So flip you around. That's gonna work quite well actually there, I think. Flip you around. Yeah, one more, there we go. So let's pop, pop you in there, grab a train station, flip it around. Now I want uh, two platforms on here. Flip it around that way. Line you up a bit. And boom, Bob's your uncle. All right, simple as that. Vallejo. Now I got, obviously I've got to do bus routes and things. Now Dallas, we want this as a bit at a bit of an angle because we've got to we've got to go into here and then we're going to have to curve around to avoid plowing into the sea, which, <laughs> which generally in 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 railway circles is deemed to be a good thing, not <laughs> not plowing into the sea. I mean personally, I, you know, I can take it or leave it, you know, <laughs> but but the general it's it's frowned upon, shall we say. In, uh, in railway circles. The real the real railway devotees are like, <laughs> railway tracks really shouldn't be going into the sea. I don't know. I suppose it's a traditionalist thing. <laughs> 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 right, let's, uh, we'll have another bus stop in there. Now, have I got this? Ah, I've got enough room to get around there. I'll be fine. Stop worrying about it, Sky. It'll all be good. Buildings. To get another one of these, uh, flip it around that way, would be better. And line it up a little bit. Boom, in you go. All right, so we just put, um, just put those two in for now. Yeah, let's just put those two in for now, I think. Uh, so, what do I want? I want some tracks. We want to hook this up. Now, I wonder if I can get this to do this in one. I probably can, actually. Let's have a look. How's it looking? It's a little bit elevated. So I might have a quick tap on the end key, just drop it down. Oh, that's too much. Uh, it's temp, you know what? I'm just gonna throw it in. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw it in. Because I'm, I must be, I must be less fussy. So I'll throw that in as well means we're gonna need uh, a switch here now the train train comes in on the left hand goes out on the right hand so we'll put uh, let's put the switch in there like that and then so what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend the main line so the main line is gonna have multiple stops but we'll still have the end track on here or like you know like a single stop bit on the end if you know what I mean uh, so we go into there and we're gonna come out kind of sort of like that there we go and then now we've got to hook this up now this is gonna be ah okay I need to get rid of this depot so let's get rid of you yes please and we'll get rid of that now uh, this bit of road here is going to be a bit of a pain. You know what? Let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of you. Take you back to about there. Get rid of that bit. Straighten that up. We'll run this road uh, round these trees this way to get it out of the way. And it kind of makes more sense going that way. Oh dear, this is a bit, it's a bit steep around here. We want to go. We want to go this way and avoid the and avoid the hill. So we'll do something like that. I think. There we go. That should be. That should have cleared the path. Hopefully, with a bit of luck. Uh, can we? Yeah, we'll get around there somehow. If um, let's see, what is that? It's a food. Oh, it's a food processing plant. Now I was gonna. I was gonna kind of throw this map away after uh, after this live stream but I think I'm actually going to continue developing this in uh, 
in my in my own live stream series. And if you if you're ever interested in uh, in joining my live streams on my YouTube channel, you're more than welcome. More than welcome. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to gonna have to go around a little bit here. So I'm gonna try and keep the speed up around 75 because uh, we've got relatively fast trains now. Now, will you curve around and go straight into there? Yes, you will, you little beauty. In you go. Throw this one in as well. Boom. All right, sweet. Now, I don't have to put some switches on that one because that's going to be mainline. Um, I do need a switch here. So let's put a switch in like there. Yeah, that's good enough. Awesome source. Okay. So, uh, we're gonna need just a little simple bus route going up here, I guess, because our coverage only extends up to there. So I think what we'll do is grab one of these roads, hook that up like that, and hmm, maybe even run that across and hook that up like that. Awesome. Right, so let's see. So our, our, our station is covering that area. So maybe a bus stop probably about up here would cover everything else. Let's have a look. What do we want? We want buildings. We want one of these. Yep, that's gonna cover everything else. So let's put a bus stop in up there. Cool. We'll add a new line. The new line is going to run from the bus station there up to that bus stop, and it's going to be as simple as that. No real need for any other additional stops. That gives us the coverage. And then let's see. So that's uh, that's Vallejo. That's which was the other? I put in two, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Dallas. Dallas, I think, might need maybe a little bit more. What's the coverage from the station? See, we're only covering up to this road. Uh, so I'm thinking, let's have, let's hook up that street. And you know what? I'm gonna hook that street up down to there like that. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna have two bus routes in here. So what do I want? I want buildings. Oh, my bus stops. So you're covering up to that road. So we need to cover this side, uh, which is tricky-ish. Yeah, I can't do it with one stop. I'm gonna have to use two, I think. So maybe we'll have a bus stop there, and we'll have another one down there that'll cover all of that area and then we'll do maybe a couple of stops over here so we'll have one over there and maybe one up there all right cool so we want a couple of lines going in uh, line two is going to go from there uh, there there and back cool and then we want another new line and this one's going to go uh, which way are we going to go? I suppose we're going to go that way, that way, and back. Awesome source. Uh, there isn't a turnaround there, unfortunately, but yeah, it is what it is. Okay, uh, so what do I need to do to finish this off and get it all running? I need to put in a couple of depots so we can get some road vehicles on here. Let's put in a depot there in Dallas, and then we want a Depot in Vallejo. Shall I do my Mexican accent? Or should I? <laughs> should I behave and not? Um, probably, probably not. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so tempting though. Right, this uh, <laughs> this bit that's raised is like, I mean, to be honest, I could just leave it alone. It's it's actually not that bad. Um, this bit's a little bit high. So what I could do, grab my terrain tool, get my smooth tool, crank the strength right down to like 0.3, and then just have a 
very quick squeeze over it. And there you go, that's just taken the worst out of it. So we're still slightly elevated, which is a nice look for, for like rural tracks, I think. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine, it's looking good. Okay. So let's um, let's get some vehicles. Did I put that? I did put that. Yeah, I did put that one in. Right, so in, uh, in Dallas, let's bring this up so I can see the lines. We want, um, let's see, buy vehicles. What are we using? Well, we've been using the, uh, the Gaganaus, 25 miles an hour. We want, this is for passengers, isn't it? Slim is, we've all, we've now, we've now unlocked the Daimler deck seat car. 22 miles an hour, 11 capacity. Uh, doesn't, doesn't sound that fantastic to me. The Guggenhaus, um, 11 capacity though. You know what, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll upgrade to these Daimlers and I can show you uh, vehicle upgrading. Let's do that. So how many am I gonna want on these two lines? I'm thinking maybe, oh. You know what, I'm gonna do like three and three. So one, two, three, let's put those on line two. One, two, three, put those on line three. There we go, easily, easily done. And then we'll go over to Vallejo. Uh, Vallejo, again, probably three vehicles. So, what do we want? Five vehicles. We'll go with the, go with the Daimler's Ace. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go with the Gaganaus in here. So one, two, three, and put them on line one. There we go. Okay, that's that done. What I'm gonna do now, is um, I'm going to try, this is probably gonna go horrendously wrong, but I'm going to try and move my existing lines. It's, it's a really, really bad idea. So we have got a line running between El Monte and Glendale, uh, which is gonna be TP Elm Gle, right? We're gonna change the name of this. This is, um, Instead of going between El, uh, El Monte and uh, Glendale, it's gonna run between Vallejo and Dallas. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be Valdal. <laughs> Excellent. Valdal, there we go, TP Valdal. Sweet. And we'll manage the line. We'll take these two stops off. Don't want it to run between there anymore. And I actually want you to run between Vallejo and Dallas. Okay, has it put the line in properly? No, it hasn't, why? Because I haven't put my signals in yet. Once so I put my signals in, should be fine. We will put in also the main line. We will add stations. So currently it goes from Amarillo transfer to El Monte. We're gonna say, nope, you don't stop there. You go on to um, Glendale and Vallejo and then you go back to Glendale back to El Monte and then back to Amarillo transfer hooray okay let's do a little bit of signals work shouldn't take too long should be nice and quick so we want a signal um, you know what let's bring up the signals again so I, can see, I just want to be able to see the lines while I'm doing this so what do I want? I want uh, signals. We want a signal uh, just here so that any trains wait and make sure that the station is clear before entering this, uh, this bit of track. And it automatically switches over as it should do. Well done, well done track. We'll put a signal at the other end, same thing. And then we'll put a couple of signals in the middle just to uh, break it up. And then uh, on the main line, to be honest, not a whole lot that we need to do. We want to do the same thing here. And then all I need to do really is just break this to track up. Let's, uh, let's bring up signals so that we can see them. So we'll put a signal in the middle here, right in the middle of this cutting. And we'll have another signal. Let's see. I've got, I've got, I've got, I've already got a signal in the middle of there, so I don't really need to do anything there. You know what? That's actually fine. So the only thing I need to do to get this 
this line to behave is just set the platform back here uh, and possibly one other place. So let's close that down. What do I want? Uh, on the main line, manage the line. When we, no, sorry, not the plat terminals. So when we come back, which is going to be uh, stop five, uh, we're going to be on want to be on terminal one, I think. Let's bring up the line statistics again. So there we go. So now our lines are working correctly, but it stops here, and that is because at the next stop we've got the same issue. We need to move. Need to move this stop that I just added. Uh, ugh, go to platforms. Uh, I need to move stop six to terminal one. Bring that back again. There we go. And now I think it should be all hunky dory and good. Looks that way. Excellent. Now the only thing is, I'm pretty sure one of my trains that I want to move down here um, will have a problem and we'll be pointing the wrong way and won't know what to do. And so let's have a look. Uh, we've, uh, we've interrupted a street connection over here, which is an important one. So we'll put that back in. So let's put in, what do I want? Uh, I want a road. Just hook that up to, oh, come on. Come on, just go straight. There we go, there we go. Right, that solved that. And then here we go, this will be our errant train. This should be on this uh, green line. Yes, TP Valdell. And he's going, I don't know which way to go. <laughs> which is fair deuce, because he really doesn't know which way to go. So I tell you what, um, how about if, if I just turn you around? So if I just flip you around like that, okay. He seems, he seems to have got the message. Now he's going the wrong way, but there shouldn't be anything in his way. So we'll see if he can actually manage it. So let's get to kick this off and, uh, and see what happens. See if he can actually find his way home. Yes, he's switched over. So he's on the right side of the track, heading in the right direction. And he's gonna zip down here. Now, now you can't, now you're not gonna be able. Oh yeah, you are. Yeah, you are, because you're just gonna be able to go. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine, what am I worrying about? There you go. Now you're on the right line, doing all the right things. Good news. Okay, having done that, now where's the other one? Here he comes. Right, so we've got both of our trains on that section. Now, the main line, we've added two more stops. So we have um, like more than doubled the length of the, the main line because for, before it was just running between two cities. It was just running between uh, Amarillo and El Monte. Now it's going El Monte, Glendale, Vallejo, and then back again. So we want to at least double the number of trains on there and probably more. So let's have a look. Let's have a little look, shall we? Right, we've got these two. Should we just um, should we just clone them? We probably should. But to be honest, now I would like them cloned from where is it? From here. Uh, and I think that's the only place they can be cloned from. See, it might try and clone them from there, and then we would have a big problem. So I tell you what, instead of doing that, I'm actually gonna buy a couple of extra trains. Um, cloning, you do need to be a little bit careful of cloning. You need to know where your depots are and know what's gonna work and what isn't. So let's take uh, what we, we were running, a Russian class, class S with, I think, three cars. Oh, and we have now got uh, the um, the F-15 tank truck and the F-15 tarpaulin truck and the M-300. Very, very sexy. 
All right, let's get, what do I want? I might, you know what, bearing in mind, we've only got like an hour and a quarter left on this section. I might just speed things up a little bit. Let's go to the day. Let's, um, let's run at normal speed for a bit. Let's get some more vehicles. We're only at 1924. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was gonna put some passenger cars on here. Now, we'd moved up to using, oh man, what, what trains were, what passenger cars were we using on here? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember which ones we were using. I'll have to have, I'll actually ha have to have a look. What were we using? We were using, oh, the six axle, six ax axle Pullmans, I believe they are. So what's I doing? Go into here, buy vehicles. We want a Type S and yeah, these, these are Pullmans. Uh, one, two. I think we're just running two. Are we running two or three? Uh, you know what, I can upgrade them later. Uh, let's buy a couple of those and put those on to, oh, I'm gonna have to zoom out a bit, the main line. Sweet. Now, these will have to wait until they've got clear track. And then they should roll out, here we go. That'll wait, that'll whiz by. This one will pull into the station and when that pulls out, the other one should join the main line. And I tell you what, we'll have a little ride on it. Because why wouldn't we? Are you, are you hiding? <laughs> is, this, is this like Thomas the Tank Engine? Is this, is this James refusing to, refusing to come out and play or something? I don't know. There he goes. Right, let's jump on board. Let's have a, a swift little run along with him just until he gets to the main line. And then we'll look at some of the stats and see if we need to do some rebalancing. And we'll see what our profits are like on the main line. Because the main line should start to make us some serious money. So off you go, where are you going? You're going straight to El Monte. Here it goes. Did you see my decorations picture? I did see some of them, yeah. I'm, I'm lagging a bit. I'm a bit behind. Are you? Okay, well, you, yes. you'll see a bit of it in about 30 <laughs> seconds as this train, like, whizzes by. Well, actually, it's stopping at the station, so you'll get a bit of a look. It's all quite pretty. We have now got the Dornier Mercure and the Flying Scotsman. Oh yeah, we've got to replace these with Flying Scotsmans. 75 miles an hour. Absolutely beautiful. All right, so you are now running along on the uh, on the main line. You've just picked up 40 people. Okay, so we should have a look, first of all, at our station statistics and see whether any of our stations need attention. And instantly we can see that some of them do. So let's have a look. So okay, Amarillo. The fields are very pretty. You like that, do you? Yeah, they're really pretty. I must admit, I, I do like them. <laughs> it's very good sky candy. Um, what's uh, what's going on in the chat? Have we got any questions or, or everybody just sitting there enjoying <laughs> the show? Um, there's no game questions. Uh, there was one from Twitch earlier. Let me just swap over from... Uh, needs more boosters says uh, so far what's your favorite new feature oh my, my, my I've, I've said this many times my favorite new feature is the is the date um, my second favorite new feature would be the modular stations I cannot wait to see what the modders produce they're gonna do amazing things with the modular stations and then my third thing would be the, the new terrain tools. Um, the terrain and paint tools. Because you can do this stuff. And you can do it so easily. Before it used to take hours and hours to do an area like this. Now you can do it in like 20 minutes. And you can make things look very, very pretty. 
So like, um, I haven't really got a good place. Um, I was just, I was just going to show some of the other textures, like the, like the gravels and stuff. Uh, okay, so, so over here where we've got this, um, having bright green grass around everywhere is kind of not really very appropriate certainly in some of the places. So you might want to like go and grab a, either an, an asphalt or a, or a gravel texture. Uh, so where's a, where's a decent gravel? Um, something, something maybe like this and just put some, put some gravelly areas in rather than, rather than grass. But of course what we need are the assets to put like on top of this, and this is where we need the modders to come in and give us stuff that we can we can put on on top of these textures. But like you can put that in, and then I don't know, you can maybe use um, something something like this to maybe just put in some some highlights or something, or maybe 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 some darker patches or something. You can, you, you can play around and make it look like it's oil soaked or whatever. And then of course the whole place would look a lot better if, uh, if I just did a, did a bit of smoothing on it. There we go. And you can do, I mean, you can do so many things with these, with these. Like for example, you've got, as well as, as well as these grass textures, you've also got cut, cut grass. So it's like, if you wanted to, you could go, okay, uh, so this is going to be a lawn. Uh, oh, let's uh, do it right. <laughs> Cut grass. Yeah, isn't it? Well, yeah, why didn't that? Oh, yeah, that is. It is doing. Oh, it's because I've got the strength way down. Let's, let's crank the strength up. You can just mow the grass like that. So, for example, you could you could mow the grass by the sides of the roads. How cool is that? So, like, take it down to about 20, 22 and a half, uh, 27. Yeah, 22 and a half. No, 27. Now, you, you could just mow the grass on the sides of the roads <laughs> if you wanted to. <laughs> How cool is that? There's so many things you can do. It's awesome, and the, like the tree brush and everything is is so cool. And um, I, you know, I, I've shown this in in my series. I suppose I should show it here as well. Um, there's a there's a thing called rip wrap, which is um, when they put like stack boulders up against the coast to uh, to reinforce the coast against uh, against the erosion. And you can use this on like, I've, I've used it on like a ship canal and stuff like that. Well, if you go into your assets and go to rocks, you've got the same thing for rocks. So we can go into here and we want probably these nice white granite rocks. Uh, grab those, crank up your brush size, just to whatever's up, like appropriate for whatever you're doing. Crank up the strength. And then if you go down to the bottom, like right to the bottom there's a thing here skip collision and this allows it to stack things on top of each other right we'll say yes to that and then uh where's a where's a decent bit okay so imagine you wanted to make this look like an artificially built uh bit of coast that's been reinforced and let's take my let's take my brush size down a little bit out there crank the strength right up and then put these in and you could I don't want to be a little bit bigger than that okay we've got the Russian class SU and the AE4-7 which is uh, I believe an electric train so you could just put this in and it, uh, you can put these in like way down as well so it doesn't look odd and then you just keep going and it will build up kind of the density and eventually let's just increase the brush size a little bit more so i can do this a bit faster and then um, eventually this will look like kind of man-made reinforcing and it's a, a really nice to do 
way to do like kind of man-made harbors and stuff like that it looks uh, it looks very very effective which you'll see hopefully in a second when I've got uh, enough density you know what that'll do so that you get the idea so you get this this kind of effect and this is called rip wrap and I just love saying rip wrap which is why I wanted to tell you about this so there you go. You can do all kinds of cool things with these uh, with these tools. Like l l seriously, you're, you're only limited by your imagination with these tools now. Uh, let's have a look at the station statistics. So we have got in Amarillo, the um, the oil is backing up. Well, that's good news. Let's go and take a look. So this is at the train station. That means we need more capacity on the trains, and that's really good news. So this must be producing, yeah, this is producing the full 400 now. So we need to make sure that this train has full 400 capacity. And at the, yeah, there you go, see, it's only got 331. So we need to uh, replace these. Oh, we've got the, the Urban Games Express. Wasn't this one supposed to be called the Good Shepherd? It was, wasn't it? It is, yeah. It was. The Good Shepherd. There we go. Because um, Urban Games are the developers of Transport Fever 2 and uh, Good Shepherd are the publishers. So there you go, little tribute to them. Okay, let's uh, let's crank up these vehicles. So I think probably two trains running six, let's just bump them up to like eight cars. So we'll stick with our SCHs. Where are we? Uh, where's the SCH? It's further up. Uh, where's, my, there's my SCH. So SCH with, uh, let's go uh, cargo wagons and we want these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Takes 96 capacity. Replace. Cool. Oh, I only did one. Bonehead. Try that again. What do we want? Steam and Oh, we've now got a new tram, the Type T1. I'm not familiar with the T1. Where's the SCH? There's the SCH. And cargo wagons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Replace. There we go. So now we've bumped those up. Hopefully, we will have over four. Yeah, 450 capacity. Plenty to deal with that. So that means. We're going to be making even more money on that line. The condition of road vehicle 11 is very poor. Now, this is the whole maintenance thing, which we haven't really touched on. I don't know whether the, the, the Colonel has touched on maintenance. Um, basically, um, in Transport Fever 1, your vehicles used to get exhausted and you had to replace them because the maintenance cost went up. Now, that's changed in Transport Fever 2. It doesn't work anything like that anymore. Um, let's have a look at... Okay, so this is Road Vehicle 18. So let's have a look at the, the RF St. Louis fuel line. So RF St. Louis fuel. Uh, what's the best way to do this? I just want to bring up the line. Let's bring up the line like that. And what I want to look at is the finances. Now, in Transport Fever 1, what you would have seen is the um, the red lines are your running costs and the blue lines are your are your uh, revenues. You would have seen this, this these red lines steadily going up over time. As the vehicles got older, the maintenance costs went up and up to the point where you needed to replace them because they were so, uh, so inefficient. They were costing so much to repair. Um, that isn't the case now. What happens is that as vehicles get older, uh, they create more emissions. Now, we haven't looked at emissions yet, but if we look at a town like St. Louis, where we've got this truck line running in here, if we look at emissions, you can see that this line is creating emissions, the station is creating emissions. Well, it's the trains going in and out of the station that cause the emissions. And also the uh, the bus lines that we're running in here. If I bring this up. Uh, the bus lines are causing emissions. Now, 
you can minimize the emissions coming off these vehicles by increasing their maintenance. So what we do is we go to uh, line management and we go to, is it line management, he said, or is it vehicle management? It's vehicle management. Uh, you go to like, for example, the RF St. Louis uh, fuel line. And instead of having to like replace the vehicles every so often and going through and doing the, the auto replace, all you've got to do is just go to here and configure the maintenance. Now, you can either do it for the vehicle or for the line. We'll do it for the line. So we'll say, you can either increase it to from, from normal. Normal, the vehicles will will slowly degrade until they get to very bad condition. If I, if I, if I mouse over it, it should, does it tell me? No, no, it doesn't tell me. But if I, um, I, I know where it will tell me. If I mouse, uh, if I if I increase this to high, it increases the running cost by 25%. But the main main the vehicle condition will never get worse than mediocre. And then if I increase it to very high, which increases the running cost by 50%, the condition of the vehicle will always be very good. It will never be worse than very good. So you can decide depending on where the vehicles are, where, like where they're running, how the emissions are looking, you can decide, do I want to increase the maintenance to reduce the emissions, um, or am I happy to have like fairly cheap maintenance, have them running a bit sloppy, um, but I'm making more money. I love this, uh, this new maintenance mechanism. I think it's, um, it's very good. But then I like the emissions I think the emissions is a good thing because in Transport Fever 1, there was nothing that stopped you gr just growing kind of infinitely, like just slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger over time. Whereas now there are very definite rules about how the city grows. And you can see our emissions now are poor and we're losing 30% growth uh, because of our emissions. So. At the moment, do we need to care about it? No, it's fine because it's it's a, it's a relatively small percentage, and there are there are plenty of ways that we can grow the city. Uh, but once we get into the later game, this is going to become significant. You're going to have more vehicles. This is going to get up to probably 50% plus, and at some point you're going to go. You know what? We need to cut back those emissions so that I can grow the city more. So I like I like that mechanic. Um. What was the question? <laughs> I've talked for so long, I forgot what the original question was. What was your favourite new feature? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The date, being able to <laughs> being able to pause the date and change the date and slow it down and all that kind of stuff. It's brilliant. Love it. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could actually accelerate this. Oh, look at this! We've now got the Alco H eight six hundred. The, um, the DL3000 WIT, the Ford Model 77, uh, the, the side stakes version and the tarpaulin version, and um, whatever the thing at the bottom was, <laughs> which <laughs> which I missed, but it was actually kind of, did you see what it was? Um, Ergos 202, Ego Roll, I don't know how to say that. No. Uh, don't really pronounce things. I, I have no idea what you're saying. It um, was a carriage. Was it? Yeah. Okay. It was just it was just what just a passenger carriage for the trains. Yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah, okay. So um we should carry on looking at the um uh looking at the station statistics. Cause look, we're getting a lot of passengers on the main line. We need to uh, we need to up the trains because there's no question I knew I, we would need to up the trains because we must be having a lot of passengers on the main line now. Um, let's see, let's just check. No, all of our stations are now very good. So there's no overloading, that's really good. Now we'll sort by cargo and we'll start uh, making some more profits. So in between Amarillo and Glendale, we've got a whole bunch of passengers waiting. And we've got passengers waiting at El Monte as well. 
So yeah, let's um, let's ramp up our mainline trains. Where's uh, where's our mainline start? Starts at Amarillo, doesn't it? Yeah. St. Louis Amarillo is a is an end bit. This is where the main line starts. Yep. So um, we can just we can just crank these up. Um, we're current we've, we're currently moving 160 passengers a year. So if we if we up this to three carriages each then we should go up to about 240. And, and that's probably the way to go. But you know what, we're gonna upgrade to Flying Scotsman's because the Flying Scotsman is one of my two favorite trains. The, my favorite train being the Mallard. So let's uh, manage the vehicles. We'll replace these with, where, there it is. Flying Scotsman. 75 miles an hour. Now, what passenger car can we match this with? Um, these are only 68 miles an hour. Uh, well, was it the Igorov we got? Yeah. That's 62. Uh, the heavyweight parlors, I guess, would be the thing. So, yeah, and because they'll do 112 miles an hour, so our... Uh, our Scotsman's will be able to max out at 75 miles an hour. So let's see, we were using these that they got a capacity of 20. So we'll just put three of these on. So one, two, three. Oh, it's a shame we haven't got nice blood and custard carriages to go on with the Scotsman, which is what, what we would traditionally have on there. But these don't look too bad. So uh, replace for 38 million. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Let's slow this puppy down. Jump on board with, ah, oh, this is one of the highlights of the game for me. The Flying Scotsman. What a beautiful train. Uh, so, like seriously, I I could sit and watch the the Flying Scotsman quite literally for hours. It is such a beautiful train. Not as beautiful as the Mallard. That is my favourite. Let's uh, let's let's tuck in let's tuck in next to the driver. I think. Whoops. Well, next to the fireman, because it's the fireman on this side, the driver's on the other side, I think. Oh, look at that. It's so... Just, it's so sleek and powerful. And for me, this is what transport... This is the best part of transport fever. It's the, it's the virtual train set. I mean, the making the money and beating the game uh, and setting yourself challenges and stuff is, is, is great. And I love that part of the game. But really, for me, it's the virtual train set. It, look at this. Seeing the trains run backwards and forwards. And I love the age of steam. Having said that, I do also love the really ultra-modern like bullet trains and stuff. And uh, I am looking forward to, in my series, eventually getting on to, I'm doing an Asian series. I'm looking forward to getting like the Shinkansen uh, bullet trains and stuff. It's gonna be very cool. So let's see, how are you How are you doing then in terms of passengers? Well, you're doing, uh, you're doing pretty good. You're running full all the time, and that's good. How many passengers do we have here? Glendale, 72, 77, that's good. Those are reasonable numbers. But I'm thinking probably if we if we head over here to Amarillo, we still got big numbers over here. Yeah, we've still got like 383 passengers over here to move. So, 
we can probably afford to bump those Scotsmen up to even four coaches. So let's do it. Main line. Oh, well, no, we're only running 150 passengers of a possible 228. So no, we're not actually maxed out at the moment. Although, here we go. Okay, we are getting close to maxed out. I should probably let it run like this for a bit and just see how it settles down. But if we're running at, at 200 passengers of a possible 228, this line is going to be making what? Uh, I would have thought around 5 million, something like that. Let's take, let's take a look. Uh, that's not what I wanted to look at. I want to look at the line statistics. And we want to sort this baby. And see, what are we making? Mainline, oh, it's only 2 million at the moment. I would have thought that would have been making more than that. Let's have a look. See, the thing is, when you get these more expensive trains like the Scotsman, they really need to be on long distance express routes. We would be making more money with this if I'd stayed with those, um, those Russian trains, which I can't remember, the, the Russian locomotives, which I can't remember the name of. The Scotsman, really, you want on nice long routes so that they can keep up that max 75 miles an hour for a, a sustained distance. But we're, we're, we're increasing. This profit will go up. Let's have a look at the, uh, let's have a look at the finances. Yeah. So we were making, what, two and a half million, something like that. Now we've put the extra trains on. Yeah, it's only this year that we'll really see like how much profit we can make. We've got a new vehicle, the uh, the Fuso B46. And uh, we're at 1932. 1935 is the is the great year. That's when we get the Mallard. I would love to get the Mallard on here. Now we've got we've got another 50 minutes, so uh, we've got time to do some more <laughs> stuff. Um, I would like to do some airplanes, so I think we'll probably do some airplanes as well. How's everything else doing? Everything else is looking good. This line too, uh, that's probably a bus too many on that line. Yeah, it's a bus too many on that line. So let's do what was I said line two? Uh, let's sell you. Try and keep everything profitable if we possibly can. Or some sauce. But you can still see, okay, even with this getting up to okay, three million. It still it still pales against a car of like a, a really good cargo line. This is pulling in six million a year now. And you can see how much work we've had to do on the passenger line. So so yeah. Cargo, if you want to make money, cargo lines is where it is. Quinnell, Quinnell says, I like optimizing and beautifying my routes. And Transport Fever is good for that. If you want a more tycoon competition style game, you're definitely going to want to use a different game. And that's absolutely right. You know, and it's, you know, you choose, you choose the game for like your play style. And if you want something that's pure competition, yeah, this isn't this isn't that game. This is the the ultimate virtual train set. And as far as that goes, it is the best bar none. It's amazing. Look at this train whizzing down here. Let's get a look. Flying Scotsman whizzing past. Awesome sauce. Oh dear, what should we do next picture? <laughs> you want to do some planes, don't you? I must admit, I did want to do some planes. Mm-hmm. Should we do some should we do some planes? Yeah, we could, we could, why not? We could potentially do some planes. Mm -hmm. uh, what I was thinking of doing was hooking up like some of these cities. Maybe we could um hiccup uh hiccup. <laughs> Hook up. <laughs> Maybe we could hook up uh, Spokane, Santa Clarita, and Wichita to an airport. That'd be kind of cool. 
Oh, let's do, let's do that. Now, where are we gonna go to? So if I'm gonna hook up an airport there, where are we gonna go to? Um, so I think we wanna go somewhere in the middle of these lines. Um, or, well, I mean, we could have a couple of airports, couldn't we? We could have one over by Amarillo. We could have another one over by like Glendale or somewhere. I, I think we should show them the way to fly to Amarillo. <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> let's, let's do that then. Now, airports. I'm, I'm pretty sure airports are going to give off some serious emissions. But yeah. I guess we will see. So I'm thinking that we would probably want to put airports somewhere kind of out of town, really. But I think for the purposes of this, uh, I, see, I'm, I'm just wondering if I could get this in here. And I'm thinking we probably could. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the, uh, to the railway station and I'm going to configure this and I'm going to add some passenger buildings on the other side. Now, I don't need to put in like specific buildings. Uh, I could just put, if I go to MISC, there are these little little steps and I could just add those steps and that would provide an, um, an access route to something on the other side. But I think that we'll go with, um, let's just put in a, a, little, a little passenger building there. A little, a couple of these little ones next to it, like that, so that we've got a, a proper exit. And then I think we're going to put the. Uh, I think we're going to try putting the airport here, and let's see if that works. Because that'd be kind of interesting if that works. What do I want? I want. Uh, I want to get the hell out of here, and I want to go to airports. So can I get this? Oh yes, I can. Can you see that little blue connector that's connecting to the passenger station? That's all we need. So, I might notch it round, like one click maybe. That looks lined up. All right, let's put it in like, uh, like that. Hooray, we have our first airport. What did that cost me, four and a half million? Good yeah. Lord, it's a good job I'm making loads of money. <laughs> what are we making at the moment? Oh, look at this, company score 11. Oh, 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 so I've got an extra point for having more than 10 trains. And uh, I've got one for having a very long vehicle. And let's face it, we all like having a very long vehicle. <laughs> Stop giggling. Uh, and and ten thing. Make it over 10 million now. Awesome source. Oh, and we've now got the Pioneer Zephyr. The Zephyr is a very iconic train. It's, um, it's but I've got to say, it's, it's kind of weird looking but it does travel at 110 miles an hour, the Zephyr. Uh, again, it's a long distance train rather than, I mean, these are really commuter routes. Um, they're much more suited for slightly slower trains if you want to maximize profits. Right, so we've got an airport in there. What we need to do is put an airport somewhere else. So I'm thinking, We'll try and put an airport in like over here somewhere. So let's have uh, let's have an airport because I haven't played around much with airports and I want to see like how they how well they work. So I'm thinking if we put an airport in, say there, and then we'll we'll have a road. Oh, and we've upgraded our roads now to all tarmac roads. Nice. And we've now got the one-way roads. Lovely. Right, so let's go with, um, I don't know, medium country road going out there. Yeah. Let's do it like this. Yeah, let's use a small country road, it's fine. So I hook a small country road in there. Put that up like that, that's fine. If you want to upgrade roads, by the way, it's just this this button here, and then you can upgrade roads 
to your heart's content, converting them all into tarmac roads. Awesome sauce. Okay, so we want um, we want a route going up this way to where is it? Now, what's the what's the speed of these roads? These are limited to 37 miles an hour. So I probably want to upgrade them to larger roads, but I think we'll probably live with the way it is for now. Uh, we'll run that into there. I'll, I'll see what vehicles... That, what we're going to need is we're going to need a way for people to get to the airport from these cities. So what we'll do is we'll put in a bus station. Uh, I, I mean, I suppose... I could potentially use trams, but I think I'm just going to throw some buses in. Try and just do this as quickly as possible, just so that we can see some airplanes flying around. I mean, that's that's really what it's about. Come on, come on, be honest. We just want to see <laughs> some planes flying around, and we're not too fussy about how it happens. Um, if I flip this around and put the bus station in, now I don't actually need a bus station. Here we go, 1935, the Douglas DC3, the Mallard. Those are kind of the big two. American fans will love the Hiawatha, obviously. Uh, the Opel Blitz is also a very, very good truck. It's a, it's a good upgrade. Um, am I going to put in a bus station? Yeah, I suppose I am. I suppose I am. Let's put in a bus station there. I'll add an extra platform there. Um, am I going to add in an extra... No, I'm not. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not, I'm not going to... So I always get fussy about things. Like, oh, should I put an extra bit of this in? No. No, you shouldn't. You should leave it alone. <laughs> right. What we want now is, um, is just a couple of bus stops around the place to give us coverage so we can get to all of these people. So I think if we have something maybe there... And then maybe uh, maybe there and I'll put in another one there so we'll do we'll do them one line at a time because otherwise I'll forget what I was planning to do <laughs> uh, we want to go from Spokane branch up to Miller Street and then Taylor Street and then Washington Street, and then go back Tyler Street, Miller Street, to Spokane. Okay, cool. I am gonna need a depot, aren't I? Yes, I am. So let's put a depot on. What do we want? We want, no, buildings. Uh, road depot. Flip you around. Pop you in there, that's fine. Buy vehicles, what are we gonna have? Um, we want something relatively quick. What, what are these Fuzos like? Ooh, 31 miles an hour. Capacity of 10. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do, pig. Uh, let's put like... I can't imagine we're going to have that many people coming, but I'm going to put three on. So, one, two, three. Look at these things. They cost 150 grand each. It's very expensive. Good lord. Uh, that goes on line four. There they go. Go on. Let's have a look at these little weird little things. These Fuzos. I have. I haven't seen these before. These are new to Transport Fever Two. These weren't in Transport Fever One. Look at those weird vehicles. No idea where they're from. Are they like Italian or? I'm thinking Fuso. I don't know. Or it could be it could be Japanese, it could be an Asian Fuso. Oh, Ooh, they are funny looking, aren't they? They really are. The PRR class GG1 electric train. It's kind of that's one of the nicer electric trains, I think. Right, so we've put in uh, we've put in Spokane. So now they can get to the airport. We'll put in Santa Clarita as well. Um I was going to try and do a diet joke, but I couldn't think of one. <laughs> I just my mind went blank at that point so yeah sorry no Santa Clarita diet joke let's put in um, see this road here is a bit funky uh, 
you know what? Let's put a road. Let's put a road like that. And then we'll. Oh, hello. He's trying to beat me to it, the game is. Let's put a road across there. I'm going to put a road around there as well. And probably one. No, nah, not like that. Maybe like that. There we go. Pray. Oh, it's putting in roads all over the place now. It's like it's like you've ignored the town for all these years, and now suddenly, when I start wanting to tamper with it, you're like, "No, I'm going to do it. It's my town. I'm going to put the roads in." All right, all right. <laughs> Calm down. No need to get upset. See, it's look, look, it's putting roads in like left, right. It's like I'm going to put blooming roads everywhere. <laughs> All right, let's get uh, let's get some bus stops in here. So what do we want for coverage? I'm thinking we're probably gonna want a bus stop out here. We're definitely gonna want one somewhere over there. So that's gonna give us coverage this. So we want something over this side. Um, you know what, I think I might put like a stop in there and a stop in like there and do it this way. So what do I want? Line. New line. We will go from the airport and we'll do there, 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 then back again. Boom, boom, boom. I could have done a loop, but, and to be honest, I could probably have laid that out better. I could probably have put this stop over here and got the coverage. Ah, it'll do, it'll, you know what, it'll do, it's fine. Don't fuss. Right, so what do I want? I want to put some vehicles on here. I'm gonna need probably a couple of extra. Let's put like five Fuzos on or something. So what do I want? Fuzos, one, two, three, four, five, and pop them on to line five. That's that done. Okay, let's get some more people coming from Wichita. Um, when I put the line in to Wichita, will that make me a Wichita line man? At least one person <laughs> laughed. Well, I say laughed, sniggered at me in a derisive manner. <laughs> I don't blame you, I don't blame you at all. Um, we'll hook that little road up there. We'll hook that road up there. Oh, well, if I can. There we go. And that'll probably do, pig. Yeah, let's run a road up there as well. All right. So let's see what we can do here. If I can do something like a little bit better than the last one, which was a bit of a bit of a mess. Um, can I get a bus stop in there? No, I can't. So. We'll put a bus stop there. So that gives me coverage of most of this already. So I'm thinking we just need like, we just need one kind of up here somewhere would be good enough. You know what, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna put in a bus stop there and I'm gonna leave it at that. And if anybody's got a complaint, you can keep it to yourself. Um, <laughs> what do I want? I want lines, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. New line from Spokane Branch to there, to there, back to 6th Street, and off we go. Alrighty, so what am I going to want there? Probably, again, like four Fuzos, maybe? Let's try it. By one, two, three, four. Four Fuzos on line, which one is it? Line six? Got to be line six. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've now got three towns potentially supplying people to fly on planes. So, now let's get a plane route in. We want new line. So I, so I start talking low and mm, <laughs> sort of grumbling slowly <laughs> to myself and pretend that I'm as good as Colonel Failure. <laughs> Or, or shall I have a sip of tea and put some roundabouts in? You don't know who that is, do you? No. That's Biffa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll just have a sip of tea. Now, 
This city needs a roundabout. Right, no, no. <laughs> Stop it. Right. That's a colonel got me doing that. Because the colonel was teasing Biffa earlier. What do I try to do? I want to put a line in. Passenger line from Spokane. Did we just do a lasso? Should we just just fly circles? It's like, you know, you can have a little pleasure trip around in a circle. No, that's just, <laughs> that's just frankly <laughs> stupid. Let's come out here. Oh, hello. We've now got the uh, the BR E94, the, uh, the Gaz MM truck, uh, both versions. Good. Thank you very much. Right, here we go. Let's pop a line in there. So, look at that. We've got a nice figure of eight going on. What, tr what, what planes are we going to put on? Well, I can already tell you we're going to put DC-3s on. Because I love DC-3s as much as the Colonel does. Uh, what do I want? Buy vehicles. Now, this is uh, one thing that's different with the airports. The airport comes with a built-in depot. <clears throat> so, we will buy... It's got to be DC-3s. It's got to be. They're only capacity 10. So, I think we'll have... We'll have a couple of, you know, I'm going to pause the game because what I want to do is space these out a bit. So I am going to buy a DC-3 there, right, which I'm going to put onto line 7. And then I'm going to go over to this airport and I'm going to buy a DC-3. Buy and put that onto line 7. Right. Now. I, don't worry, I am going to watch the route. But what I want to do is get these two planes to uh, to come out and take off and get like halfway around the, the route. And then I want to put two more planes. So I want like a total of four planes on here. Now I've no idea whether we can get enough passengers to supply four planes, but we'll see. <laughs> Okay, there it goes, taking off. Don't worry, we're gonna do a complete flight on these planes, trust me, because I love, I love flying on these planes. You know what, I should have put them in so that they flew over my farmland, shouldn't I? We'll get a bit of a look when we go around there, I suppose. But So, where are you playing? I saw you just now. Up there, I can see your shadow. I can see the shadow, oh, there it is. So, we want pretty much when Where's the other one? There's the other one. Okay, pause. Oh look, they're about to about to crash into each other. That is, that is a, a mid-air near miss, that is. That'll be fun. That'll be fun when we ride on this. Uh, so we want, buy vehicle, DC3, buy, put you on line seven, and whiz back over to the other side. See, this is what the Colonel didn't do. He just threw them all on and then let them sort themselves out. I'm being a little bit more a uh, little bit more precise about the whole thing. Buy one of those, stick it on line seven, there we go. Alrighty. Crank you up. We're gonna have a ride on this. So slow down a little bit. Now I oh I wanna I wanna show you the door will open. Look at that! The details on these vehicles, it's like, um, if you watch the trains, like the cargo trains, like the, again, the doors open, um, if they're box cars, the doors will slide open for the cargo to be loaded up and all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's amazing the details that you can see. And of course, on the planes, this, I have to say, this kind of popped my cork when Transport Fever 1 first came out. It's like when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, that is so good. <laughs> so, we're gonna have a little bit of a ride for takeoff on this DC-3. Here we go. Oh, and watch for the undercarriage. There goes the undercarriage folding up. Oh, love it. Oh, it's just awesome. Let's go and have a bit of a... Almost a pilot's eye view.
I love the fact that you can now get like so close to the air the airplane. You can look at every single detail of the airplane. And every vehicle in the game. There's the pilots. They look like fairly responsible chaps, so I feel quite safe on this journey. <laughs> They're probably sitting there playing cards. Like, like, say they've got their hands like right down there. They've probably got, what have you got? Got three of a kind, how about you, four house? <laughs> how beautiful is the map, guys? It's pretty awesome, huh? Okay, we've been climbing. Now we're gonna level off. So we've reached whatever our cruising altitude is. Don't ask me what the, don't ask me what the cruising altitude of a DC three is. I don't blimmin really know. So where's the where's the oh there's the airport. Oh look there, there's a DC three about to whiz past us. Awesome sauce. Oh. So we've had a little bit of a cruise. And now they've, um, they've feathered back the engines. And we're heading in for a landing. You can see the air there, there's the airport directly ahead of us now. I'm so glad that I chose a tropical map again. It's definitely my favourite. It's definitely, definitely the prettiest, isn't it, picture? The islands are so pretty. What's your favourite bit of the game? I like seeing you do the decorations. I like the fields and the animals and everything because they're really cute. Why, why am I not surprised? <laughs> you know me, anything we cute. Can, we can actually like go like right inside the plane. Uh, and if I get it right, we can actually like go in with the pilots. Here we go. Do you want to see what it's like to land in a DC-3 from a pilot's perspective? Uh, can I just edge forward a little bit? Actually, no, because I want to. I want to see it land. I love watching it. <laughs> so look, the wheels aren't spinning, and then when it hits the ground, are they going to spin? No. Nah. Oh yes, yes, yes. Well, this one, the one on the right, on the right didn't, but the one on the left did. The one on the one well, on the right stuck, obviously. Should get one of the mechanics to take a look at that. Oops. Break. Don't break the immersion, Sky. Don't break the immersion. <laughs> Don't go under the world. Well, there you go. The only problem with the DC-3 is because, I mean, one of its trademarks is how steeply angled it is because the, the, front, the front gear is so high uh, that the plane's at an angle. The problem is the camera is also at an angle. It's the same angle that the plane's at, which is very weird, I have to say. We have got passengers! Oh, lordy, 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 we have got passengers. How many passengers? 16 passengers! Our DC-10 is going to be running full in the world. <laughs> and off he goes. Running full. Now, does that mean... Are we running... Oh, my Lord. We're running uh, 30 out of 40. Let's have a look. You've got... Oh, you've only got five people on board. I'm pretty sure that when you get to the other end... You know what? Let's speed this up, because I'm pretty sure that we're going to be running this line full. So you've got six passengers waiting there. Let's head to the other end. Uh, where's the other end of the line? It's down here at Amarillo. Here we go. So have a look. Yeah, we've got 24 passengers waiting, which is obviously 
far more than a plane full. So you're going to drop off five. You're going to pick up ten. Boom. So we can probably put another couple of planes on here if we wanted to. Look, there's more people ploughing in here. There's 26 waiting now. 31 waiting. So I'm going I'm to put another DC-3 on here. Bye. And put you onto line 7. And I'm going to pause it. I'm going to go to the other end. And I'm going to put one on the other end as well. Why? Because I can. <laughs> what do we want? When do we want it? Um, DC-3. Bye. Put you on line 7. Go. Off you go. How many passengers we got waiting? Go away. 21 passengers waiting. So we've got 10 for this plane. This one's just landing, coming round. We've got 10 for you. In fact, we've already got 13, 16, 17. Yeah, we can definitely justify this many planes. The Fuzos are doing a good job. Look at all the people flocking in. It's like we're off to Mallorca on our holidays. <laughs> You're not going to Mallorca, you're going to Amarillo. Oh, we don't mind going to Amarillo, that's fine. Look at all the people flocking in and out. I love this little entrance, by the way. I think that's very cool. That, that, is, that is a very tropical airport. I like that. How many people we got? Wait, look how many people are waiting. You know, this is probably more people waiting than I've ever had at an airport in Transport for even One. <laughs> Loads of people travelling. My God, look, they're flocking in. Which I suppose is appro appropriate, really. They're flocking like birds to an airport. There comes in our next DC-3. Next one's ready to take off. Off you go. Good job. Well, there we go. As, as the Colonel would say, jobs are good. My, seriously, we need more planes on here. We need bigger planes. We need bigger planes. We need jets. Where do we get jets? I don't know. We're coming up to uh, 1940. We don't get jets in 1940. I know that much. But we've, we've got the 1643 Pittsburgh. Very cool. All right. Let's have, uh, let's have a look at our lines. Um, oh my god, an airline is going to be making us money. Can you believe it? An airline that's actually making money and not just making like a little profit. It's actually making us one and a half million. Crazy. Loving it. And all of our lines are doing pretty good. Um, the RF St. Louis Crude... That looks to me like I've got too much capacity, but no. No, we need 800, don't we? I could probably lose a couple of vehicles, but yeah, it's fine. Um, you know what? I could upgrade. I was going to show you upgrading, wasn't I? But I, I have kind of showed you. Oh, my God, look. There's 50, there's 60 people waiting. Oh, that is awesome. I like if you set up like proper transport systems now, things actually like work in, tra in Transport Fever 2. Whereas some of the things in Transport Fever 1 were a little bit eh, planes didn't really work that great, ships not so fantastic. But in Transport Fever 2, if you set it up right, oh, they work. They work very, very well. Could we. Um, can we manage another couple of planes on here? I think we probably could, couldn't we? Let's pause. Let's see how I get another couple of planes on. So, bye. DC-3, bye. Put you on line 7. Whiz to the other end of the line. And give me another DC-3. Boom. Put you on line 7. Boom. Oh, my God. A, a plane line with eight DC-3s that's actually going to be making a problem. My God, look at the people. Oh my, we've got over a hundred passengers. 
Give me jet. Give me Concord now. I can make a profit with it. We haven't got any better vehicles than DC-3s, have we? No. No. Um, these are 10. The Junkers is... Uh, the Junkers is also 10. The Vickers Victoria is, like, older. It's only 8. The Dawny is 5. This thing's something 3. Yeah, 3. So, yeah, we need, we need something bigger than a DC-3. We need something like the de Havilland Comet or something would be awesome and I do like the de Havilland Comet it's one of the iconic planes uh, we don't care about these uh, road vehicles whoa hello <laughs> that, that surprise me it suddenly appeared out the corner right up whoa oh it's so nice to have planes flying in and out isn't it guys How many people? How many people are on uh, in the in the are watching us at the moment? Picture. Just trying to figure out if I've bored everybody yet with the <laughs> planes, or whether they're like me and they're sitting there going, "Oh, the planes, the planes, boss, the plane, the plane, boss, the plane." <laughs> uh, we have viewers wise, three thousand six hundred and twenty-five people. Very cool. Mhm. Mm Great to have you all here, guys. I hope you're, um, I hope you're enjoying seeing the game. The Colonel will be back in the next 15 minutes or so, I think, to do another session. In between now and then, if you've got anything that you want to uh, particularly see, please, please put something in the comments or if you've got any questions about the game, anything that you'd like to see, please let me know. But yeah, we, we desperately, look, we're up to 130 people waiting. We desperately need bigger planes. I mean, could, so you're taking off, you've just landed. Could I squeeze two more planes on here? I mean, you know what, if I, if I do that, um, actually, probably the, the best way to see them is if I go to the vehicle manager. Because that they'll this dark purple should stand out against the white background. So we've got two there. Yeah, we can probably squeeze another couple on. But it's not going to make a dent in those passenger numbers. Like, it just isn't. So, well, but, but we'll do it. We'll throw... Uh, throw another one on at this end there you go whiz over to the other end throw another one on and five vehicles DC3 firm line seven look <laughs> it's now it's now officially out of control They need to rename the game to Plane Fever, because <laughs> apparently the inhabitants of this uh, of this island have absolutely got Plane Fever. Look, I just, I can't keep up. That's just landing. You immediately take off. Where's the next plane? Here it is. Ooh, that's a nice bit of banking. You land and the next one's ready to take off, so. Oh, here we go. The C-49 Skytrain. That's what we wanted. Right. Pause. Pause, you. You're not getting away. Oh, no. Oh, no. Manage. <laughs> oh, yes. Where are you? Now, how many does this... Please let this be a decent upgrade. No! Oh, this is the cargo version, isn't it? Of course. Oh, Mom! <laughs> I want a bigger plane. Oh, so, yeah, I don't know. If we, if I end up doing another segment today, if I do another two-hour stint, we definitely want to do some air cargo, don't we? That would be seriously cool. 
See, look. The the planes are uh, about as frequent as I can get them. I might be able to squeeze like two more on, but that would be absolute. I mean, the next one's coming in already. There's two on the ground. One just taken off. So I, I don't think I can really add much more to the capacity. And what are we at? 135 passengers. So it looks like we've maybe stabilized now. Oh my lord, we're down to 127. For a couple of seconds at least. Alrighty, well. Well, there you go. I mean, that's... That's planes in Transport Fever 2. Do they work? My God, they do. <laughs> they work amazingly well. How much profit are we? We, I, we should have doubled up the profit. We should be making about, what, three million now? Let's have a look. Uh, what did I say? Three million. And we were making, it did bounce up to like 3.9 for a second, from like a millisecond. Three and a half, three and a half million we're making from planes. Unbelievable. Craziness. But hang on a second. Um, there's ten. Yeah, yeah. I've got ten. Pl I've got ten planes on there. Each carries ten, which is a hundred passengers. The uh, the main line is just about kind of sort of right. Yeah, we're carrying about 200 passengers or possible 228. That's, yeah, probably just about right. Make it four and a half million. But look at our fuel and oil line. Still beating the hell out of them, making six million. B-E-A Unifor. So what are we up to? We're up to almost 150 million. Have I got any debt? No, I haven't got any debt. And we're making, what, 11 and a half million a year now? Very, very comfortable at this point. So yeah, what I was, um, what I was thinking of doing um, was setting up a, a very complex cargo system. So like, I don't know, let me know if, if you'd be kind of interested to see this or not. What I was thinking of doing, um, is setting up something similar. Oh, hello, what's this? Oh, these are awesome. These are these are barges with uh, with tow boats. Oh, those are, oh, I need to find some way to use those. I'm pretty sure I could as well. What, um, what I was gonna do was something similar to what I did in the last few episodes of my, um, my Tropical Islands series on YouTube. And that was to put in uh, if I bring up the, the industries, uh, the, if you really want to make large, large amounts of money, what you do is you produce one type of goods at one end of the map. You produce another type of goods at the other end of the map that can be shipped one way uh, on a particular form of transport. And then the other goods can be shipped back. So for example, uh, food one way and goods back again. Now you can do that by ship or you can do it by train because um, it's box cars for food and for goods. You, you need to have a foot uh, like goods that can be used on the same type of transport. Um, so what else? What else could you do? Um, Food and goods is the best one that I've found. What else could you do? Uh, maybe, maybe machines. You know what? If we go to uh, if we go to a depot, where's the depot? Where do I put the depot in? The tra I'm looking for the train depot. The train depot's at the end of the line, uh, which is all the way back here. Here we go. So if we look at um, if we look at the vehicles, and we look at the cargo wagons. So what can a box car carry? Um, plastic, okay, so machines and tools. So you could make machines at one end, tools at the other. Or, or any combination, really, of machine, machines, tools, food, and goods, right? So it's just a case of finding uh, like a good setup. So for example, 
over here, uh, do we have a couple of oil wells somewhere? You know what, we've got a couple of oil wells over here. Uh, we would need to ship those to an oil refinery there. Uh, then we would need to ship the oil to a plastics factory. Now there's a, there's a plastics factory there, chemical plant. So we could, we actually, that'd be good. We could, we could move that by ship across there and then bring the plastic back on the same ship. And then the plastic needs to go to a goods factory. And there's one around here somewhere. Where is it? Well, there's one over there, but I thought there was one over here somewhere. Oh, here's, there's one over here. Amarillo goods factory. Oh, now we've got the DC4. That's the upgrade. And we've got the big boy. Oh yeah, we've got the big boy. 17 million, the big boy. Loving it. Okay, at that point, I'm actually going to slow things down because we, you know, in fact, I'm going to, am I, I'm going to pause the game because let's face it, we've got the Mallard, we've got big boys, we've got the DC4. This is an, this is probably my favorite era of the game. The, the 1940s, you, you've just got like the best vehicles. Um, right, so yeah, so we could make goods at this end. We've got all the bits and pieces. We've got, so uh, we need, we need steel. Uh, sorry, we yeah, we need we need the plastics. Yeah, we've got that. Uh, ship it to a goods factory. Then we need some steel. For steel, we need a couple of iron ore. Well, we've got iron there, and uh, there's got to be another iron. And there's an iron ore there. We could ship those into this steel mill here with a couple of coal. Well, there's coal there, coal there. I mean, all of that can be trucked in, right? And then, so we've got the steel. We ship the steel over to the goods factory. We're producing goods. Okay, so we're now producing goods at this end. Then you have, um, you can either ship them out to a dock here and have a, a ship, a ship route around the island or whatever. We can even put in a, like a ship canal through here or something if we wanted to. Um, or just have a train line taking them down to this end of the map. And then here, well, the obvious thing here is we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got like six farms. We need four farms to, to fully supply a food processing plant. And there's a food processing plant right there. So we could just bring four of these. I mean, again, we could truck that in or we could do it by train get the grain in there, produce the food, and then the food goes up, the goods come down, and that line, just that line alone, running backwards and forwards, full with uh, with food and grain, uh, uh, with, with food and goods. Oh, you're talking like that length of track? Uh, you're talking probably close to you're getting close to 10 million a year, just that line. So, I mean, you put all of that in, oh, we're gonna be up making like 25 million a year easy. I mean, we're already making 12. So no, we're probably, probably closer to 30, but somewhere between 25 and 30 million a year we'd be making if we put that in. So uh, anybody interested in that? <laughs> we could have big boys running the food and the uh, the food and the goods backwards and forwards. Do you want to see a big boy track through here, running that? Oh man! Well, we've got three minutes, and the Colonel should be here because he is Mr. <laughs> Punctual. <laughs> he's on his way. Is he? Oh, is he? he? Is. <laughs> Funnily enough, he's on his way just as I mention it. <laughs> uh, Skiv is excited for the big boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good on you, Skiv. Um, yeah, I, I, well, I think um, I think we'll wait for Colonel Failure. And while we're waiting for Colonel Failure to show up, I'm going to turn off my uh, I'm going to turn off my icons. Uh, am I going to leave the town? I, I'm even going to turn the towns off because I just want to enjoy having another ride on a plane. Because I'm sorry, but I I don't get enough of this. So plane. Jump on board. Uh, am I going to go first person? Yeah, I'm going to go first person. Let's move to the side. 
Actually, you know, I'm gonna go first person. <laughs> Here we go. Hello. Hello, Colonel. Yes, sorry about that. It's all good. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm coiled like a <laughs> spring. Arr. I've just put in a fabulously... F and you know what? I should do the upgrade, shouldn't I? I should. You let's, should. Let's quickly do the upgrade before the Colonel takes over. <laughs> what do I want? I want... Um, I want line statistics. I want... Oh, here we go. Line 7. Manage vehicles. Replace. Replace the DC-3s, which I do love and I will miss, with DC-4s. We go up from 10. Heretic. We go up from 10 to 15 capacity. Mm. Replace. It's only going to cost me 14 million. Drop uh, in the ocean for me. Cheap as chips. How much have you got? Uh, 150 million in the bank now. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Oh, look at that, would you? I mean, really, it, the the, um, the DC-4 was only a stretch DC-3, really. Yeah. Here's one for you. I'll go one for you, right? Now, on. based on the success of planes, Yeah. I reckon you could do an entire playthrough with nothing but planes and then buses to connect them up. Oh, you could, because I've just, I've just kind of proved it, to be honest. Yeah. Oh yeah, tell me about it. My uh, my both my airports have got 150 solid passengers at all times, and I'm running like 10 planes on there. Uh, the, in fact, your setup is it like in that case like exactly the same as mine. I've I know. Got, yeah, yeah. I've got 10 planes, better. and I've got 150 people waiting at the airport. Yeah, and I suspect that would be uh, terminal capacity. So I suspect the the terminals top out at 150. That's possible. I'm just enjoying this DC-4. It's alright. <laughs> I, I mean, I like the D... I, I mean, I love... Oh, okay. I love oh, I take the DC... I love the DC-3s. But I tell you what, this DC-4 is a pretty plane as well. That's no, alright. It's, you know, it's funny. It's... The, the, oh, the DC-4 the, the is... Comet, uh, the, the, the Havilland Comet, incidentally, uh, 62. Oh, 62. Uh, yeah. I, I do love the de Havilland Comet. Well, so I, I iconic. Me, with I those... put my foot down ahead of my next session. I'm in 1968. No. Yep. You jumped forward to 1968? Yeah. How very you're, you're going, ah, oh, you're the big boy. I go, yes, mate, I've got the shin <laughs> case. Oh, yeah. oh, you, oh, you're going shin then? <laughs> Yeah, I'm I gonna run care. it from one end I of the map care. to the other. I've got big boys, and I know, I know you would rather have big boys than a Shinkansen. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's a total. That's a total fiction, obviously. Completely fictional. I, I, the thing is, I'd rather have the Mallard. I would. Uh, the A4. I oh, would yeah, yeah. so A4 rather have fun. Mallards than uh, big boys. So, all right. No, no, no. Give me a big boy any day of the week. Sorry, Colonel. I, I, I that's take, the I, way I, I roll. I'll, I mean, I'd take a class 9000 as well. Would you? Yeah, yeah, that's a good looking, good looking bit of American muscle train. You see, you really love the American trains. I like I the American like... trains, but I'm not in love with them to the extent that you are. No, I mean, they are, compared to uh, British and European stuff, they are just brute force. They're just, you know, they're mean and hefty and get the job done. Uh, I, I mean, like. I... I like the the really big, beefy, modern, like the the GEs, um, which is the one that I'm thinking of, which is kind of the, the classic modern American diesel train. Well, like SD70 or SD90. Yeah, some, something, one of that ilk. I put I put a load of S I think they were SD seventies on um, on my EPEC map. I, had, I I got them in all kinds of liveries. I just put loads and loads of them on. Are you getting waved off? You're getting waved off, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. It used to happen in transport fever once in a while, um, but yeah, sometimes they wave off. Yeah, I think ten planes on here is too many. Because. You must have been waved off about three times by now. 
let's let's stop following you. <laughs> I think my spacing is just a little bit more than yours. I think my my two airports are just a little further apart because I haven't had any I haven't had any waves off. Mine, mine are, uh, are, are spaced quite nicely. Yeah, the, mine are, my two airports are probably just about half a map apart. Right. Oh, but you're, I've got a you're square running, map. I've got a square you're running map. square, right. I'm running rectangle. Well, are you running two to one? Uh, one to three. Oh, you one to three? Yeah, that is much better for, for, uh, for airplanes. Well, also, you know, I find that if you do something like a one to three and then don't put too much stuff in it, it gives you just a heck of a lot of space to, to you know, explore the world and, and, and build big stuff and things. It's very true. It's very That's true. That's what I was waiting for. Right. 1970. I'll freeze the time there. 1970. Yes. Era, yeah, running, era of the I'm still running steam trains. trains. I'm going to do all my upgrades on uh, on screen. When do you get the, the Shinkansen is 70s, isn't it? Uh, 66, the oh, first 66, edition. really? Yeah. It's earlier than I thought. 220. There we go. Now. So let's see, how much are my DC4s making for me now? Let's have a little look. Oh, let you know what? We need to do the um, the handover competition, don't we? See where we're up to. Actually, where the hell's my headquarters? My headquarters where did you leave it? In, I left it in Amory. Oh, here we go. Look. Oh, I've grown. I've definitely grown. Oh, yep, yeah, mine, mine sprouted a funnel. Oh, look, look. Oh, I've got a new... I've got a new fountain outside. I've got a bloke sitting on a propeller. With an anchor. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm past him. I've got an aeroplane and uh, and two high-speed jobbies. Going oh, on. you got you got a plane, a plane, a train, and a ship. That's the fella. Oh, yeah, that's very good. But so, that yeah. could just be age. You're, you're definitely ahead of me in points then. So let's see. what. Let's have a look. Headquarters. I'm up to company score of 15. Right, I'm on 17. Oh. But you see, you've been running it in between. Yep. Well, that's purely because I wanted to get to some of the end games. <laughs> the, end, the, the closest to the end game stuff. No, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Not much. Grumble, grumble, <laughs> grumble. Um, uh, the, the one thing have, I would say... Have you got a very long vehicle, point. though? That's that's what I want to know. Uh, yes, yes, got very long vehicle. Thank you very much. I've got a very long vehicle. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. And, about and it. I don't mind people knowing it. Yeah. Frankly, the one one pro tip I would offer people: reboot the game uh, every hour and a half, two hours, three hours, something like that. Don't just let it run all day because uh, it can become a bit more unstable. But that will undoubtedly get a patch of some description. It just feels like it gets a bit more wobbly over time. I must admit, I haven't really noticed that. Well, I, when I record stuff for YouTube, I tend to do, uh, you know, three, four uh, at a time, particularly this week, because I've, I've had no time at all this week. Um, and uh, and it, unless you take a break every so often, then the, uh, the, the synchronization gets all skew with. Really? I, I must admit, I haven't run into that problem. I haven't run into that problem. Well, it's nice to be you then. Oh, it, well, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, fine. If it happens to you, you'll go. Should have listened. So, how much money? How much money have you got in the bank? Uh, only one hundred and seven. Only one hundred and seven. Yeah. But you've got. But you've gone all the way up to a nineteen seventy. Good lord. Yeah, I'm not making that much money. You. Uh, next segment, I'm gonna just like make ridiculous amounts of money. Then. I'm still only doing, you know, in a, in a standard year, I'm doing five million. Okay, I'm up to... What am I up to now? Let's have a look. I'm up to... So I made 12 and a half. Last year I made... Yeah, again, about 13. So I'm up around 12 and a half, 13. Yeah. Don't you love it? Yeah, it's great. As, hasn't today just been total joy it's been great fun it's I've been awesome it. i've got you know what I've, I it's an excuse to just play transport fever all day and i gotta go oh okay then i don't know about on. you but with the editing and all the rest of it as a youtuber i don't get to play games 
as much as I would like. And today nope. I've been I've played Transport Fever probably more today. Well, I have. I've played it more today than I have any other normal day. It's yep. been such a joy. Yeah, such good fun. Right. So I suppose I suppose it's time to hand over to you again. Oh, <laughs> grumble, yeah. grumble, really grumble. Yeah. That's all right. You can have another go in a bit. Begrudgingly, I will hand over. I suppose. <laughs> you made me get up this morning. You can do the lunch. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. All right. I'll be back to chat with you in um, a couple of hours then. All right. Yep. I'll be here. All right. Well, mate. Where else would I be? You have, you have fun with your blooming shinker sends. I intend I'm not to. bitter. I'm not bitter. All right. I'm bitter. It's okay. You'll get over it. <laughs> You're a big boy. You can all right, guys. Yourself. We are uh, we're going to do a swap over, so um, you we'll, we'll disappear for a second, and then we'll be right back with uh, with Colonel Failure with a, another masterclass on transport fever too. <laughs> Peace out, guys. <laughs>